Welcome back everyone, this is Odysseus, and you are watching the Arkham Horror Campaign video series, game number one, turn number 17. Whew, we had a really bad turn of luck during the Mythos phase last turn. I'm going to quickly give an overview of where we stand at the beginning of turn 17, because my I got a foreboding feeling that we're really close to just uh, losing this game outright. So we're going to start with a look at the board. We have one monster in the sky, a wraith. We have two monsters in the outskirts. A terror level, which seems to be constantly creeping up, sitting on level 7 right now. We had a seal at the woods. We lost that last turn with a gate burst. That was horrible luck. Uh, Tommy Muldoon sitting in the streets right now, uh, having been chased off by the Sheldon gang. Uh, he took a couple of stamina loss for that. We have a seal at the witch's house and a clue waiting there. With a little luck, Vincent Lee will make it to the witch's house and continue working on his newspaper mission. We have George Barnaby at the science building just turning in a gate trophy to get a couple of clues over there. <coughs> and we have an open gate to the underworld at the unnameable. We have a gate open to the dreamlands on the unvisited isle with a ghost sitting at that gate. We have Vincent Lee in the Rivertown streets, who has just had the Servitor of the Outer Gods move to his location. Not a good deal. Luckily, it's not too hard to sneak away from that. The general store has been closed, of course, because of the terror level being what it is. Trish, sitting on our other seal, currently at the Black Cave. We have an open gate to Ryla at the graveyard. Whole bunch of monsters parked in the streets on the north side. We have a maniac, a formless spawn, a, a star spawn, and a deep one hanging out there on the north side streets. And we have an open gate to the city of the great race in uh, Independence Square. I'm reminded also that the Curiosity Shop is closed because of our terror level. Up in Kingsport, we have some dreams going on up here. Then, if you end your move in the harbor side street, you can gain clues, have an encounter in another world too while you're there. Rift Track is starting to get a little full. Yeah, it could be a problem next turn as well. We uh, have to go to the go to that. We're really going to be in trouble. Uh, just not really looking good for the heroes. I will also point out the most important thing I think is that the King in Yellow deck has moved to Act Two. If we draw an Environment Weather card, we lose the game outright without even facing each one. The King in Yellows will have concluded. I've never lost a game to this. This is going to be very interesting if that plays out that way. Uh, we only have four tokens on the Doom track. This is also very unusual. We've uh, just not had, we have lost one because of, a, um, of an Elder Sign. We just haven't had the gates opening the way they normally do and every time uh, we should be getting tokens, we're getting Monster Surges or, uh, or something along those lines. We do have an environment, urban in play, that is those dreams up in uh, Kingsport, so we will now, uh, now we've had an overview, and sort of a, things looking starting to look bleak for the, for the investigators, we'll see how well it fares out here in turn 17. Alright, here we are, ready to do the upkeep phase in turn number 17. we have got some interesting things to take care of this turn. We'll start with Trish as usual. Now she needs to dash up to the Asylum, which we're going to have to move her speed all the way up to four, because it is four spaces away. Because of her unique slider tracks, we're actually going to be able to do this a little bit interesting. We're going to not move her lore and will, and instead jump her fight sneak up. That gives her a five sneak, which is pretty good odds of sneaking by that servitor in the streets hanging up there with Vincent Lee. So I think we're going to be pretty good there and we're going to try to get up to the asylum and heal some of our Sandy. George Barnaby is once again, he's one of these old guys, he doesn't move around very fast and he has no way to really increase his movement. He is going to keep his speed where it is and I think just in case we don't really need our fight up right now, we're going to take our fight down and we're going to take our luck up. Alright, that gives us a two will just in case and increasing our luck to four. Alright, that uses his two focus and he does have to roll to keep his blessing. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Here we go. 
and he does not roll a one. We're in good shape there. All right, way to go, George. Now, Vincent Lee, who just had a terrifying creature fall out of the sky into the streets right beside him, is ready to run away. We only need a speed of two to reach the witch's house, so we're going to adjust our slider down to give us a little bit more sneak. And that gives him three dice to try to evade. They are going to be blessed dice, hopefully. So the only other thing he needs to do is roll for his blessing. Here we go. And we roll not a one. That's all we care about. With three blessed dice, he should be able to evade that servitor of the other gods. Get out of that without a dodge. And uh, go go uh, gather some uh, a clue at the witch's house, as well as complete the next part of his mission for the newspaper. That leaves us with Tommy Muldoon, who's going to do something a little bit tricky here. During the movement phase, he's got a, a pretty cool plan. He's going to uh, refresh his map of Arkham. And he is going to gain his money. I'm going to uh, turn in four dollars here. One, two, three, four. And gain a five spot for his deputy's pay. And there we go. He's really nicely collecting up the money here. And he will have to also roll for his blessing. <coughs> There we go, and he does not roll a 1. So everybody who has a blessing is going to get to keep it this round. Oops, we're going to tilt those off and put them up here. Okay, I forgot, we're going to move our first player marker. This is turn number 17, so Trish will be our first player. It's going to be sort of important because we're going to need to hand off that Find Gate spell. That's going to be very good, useful for Vincent Lee, who's probably going to be the next person to have 5 clue tokens for another ceiling. All right, well, that should wrap it up for our upkeep phase in turn number 17. Here we go, ready to do the movement phase in turn number 17. First player is Trish, so she's going to move. She has a speed of 4. So... We're going to go ahead and do all of our movement, and we'll have to back up if we do not make this evade check. We're going to go one, passing by Vincent Lee. Two, three, and four up to the asylum. While she passes Vincent Lee, she's going to hand him the Find Gate spell. He is a spellcasting type of character, so now uh, he's got the ability to get into another world and back out very quickly. We do have to make an evade check. Now her sneak is a 5 with 0 modifier for the monster. No modifier for the environment right now, but I'm going to roll 5 dice and probably succeed here. We will roll, oh yes, I see 3 successes in our 5 dice, so she does sneak by Servitor of the Outer Gods. Very good job, Trish. Maybe that's a sign of good things to come. Okay, George Barnaby. Um... He, being a slow old man, just cannot quite get his act together as far as movement goes. We're planning to head up to the asylum, just not going to make it this turn, moving at the speed of three. He's going to go one, two, three. Man, he almost made it there. Not quite really hoping none of those monsters on the north side move towards him this turn. It's not a very combat oriented character. That leaves Vincent Lee, now in possession of this fancy dancy uh, fine gate spell, is going to try to sneak away from this servitor of the outer gods. His sneak is currently a three, and he is blessed, so he will roll three of the blessed dice. There we go. Three dice. And come on, Vincent Lee. He rolls a blessed success. Yay, Vincent Lee. He does get to move his two spaces. One two to the witch's house picking up the clue there giving him his third clue and his newspaper assignments task part number two says witch's house so we have now been to the witch's house technically i think we have to end our encounter phase there but we're going to go ahead and grab that clue because we will be having an encounter there in just a second that gives him two out of three things done he just has to make it back to the newspaper which is going to be harder than you would think because there are Four monsters in the street outside the newspaper. Not good. Okay, over to Tommy Muldoon, who has something pretty tricky he's going to do. 
he's going to use his Mego brain case. He's going to exhaust it and switch places between him and a monster. So, he's going to go to this gate on the unvisited aisle, putting the ghost in the streets in the uptown district. That way, in a moment, he'll be sucked through to a dreamlands where he has five clues. Hopefully he'll be able to get back quickly and intact and get us another seal on the board. That would be great. All right, well, that wraps it up for the movement phase in turn number 17. Okay, back for the encounter phase of turn number 17. Trish is our first player, and she is not having a normal encounter. She is at the asylum, and she's going to pay $2 to heal up her sanity. That's going to give her four more blips, so she has a maximum of five now instead of six, but at least she's now back to full. All right, paying $2 to the bank. One, two, there we go. That's all for Trish. And George Barnaby will be having no encounters because he is in the street wishing he was at the asylum. Vincent Lee is at the witch's house, and let's see what happens here. The witch's house says, a gate and a monster appears. Well, lucky us, we have a seal here. So, no gate will appear. Now, we always have played that if the no gate appears, then no monsters appears because the monster has to appear because a gate appeared. So, we always play that there is no, not going to be a monster in that location either. Okay, well, that was a lucky encounter for Vincent Lee. Nothing actually happened. All right. Then we're going to see Tommy Muldoon during the Arkham encounters is sucked through to the Dreamlands. Where are we at? There we go. Dreamlands for Tommy Muldoon. And since he is the last player, we're going to go ahead and resolve his encounter in the Dreamlands. Oh, we have one right here. The man in the corner asks you for a match. You can tell right away he's not ordinary. Pass a will check minus two to be blessed. Well, we're already blessed, so this actually can have no other effect on us. We do have a will of four, uh, which means we get to roll two blessed dice. All right, let's scroll a couple of blessed dice. Not that it's going to matter because we can actually not be blessed again. So it would be nice if we could keep our blessing an extra turn after lo possibly losing it. That is going to wrap up the encounter phase for turn number 17. All right, here we are back to the mythos phase. This is going to be for turn number 17. It's going to come down. If we get unlucky here and draw an environment weather card, we immediately lose the game. So we're crossing our fingers. and Let's see what we draw. Soup Kitchen Seeks Donations. Headline! Yes! We do not lose the game. All right, get at least one more turn. Here we go. Oh, yes. This is one of the cards from the Miskatonic University expansion. Since we're not playing with the Innsmouth board, we do not put a gate at the Marsh Refinery, instead we put it at the Black Cave. Ha! Ah, but lucky us, there's a seal at the Black Cave, no gates can appear there. So no gates or no monsters will appear this turn. That's very fortuitous. Um, that means we get no tokens on the Doom Track as well. Very nice. Now let's check the monster movement. S circle in the white. Let's get a Rift token in. First, that is not going to be a good thing. Uh, the North Point Lighthouse and the circle white is right here. That will open up a rift. Oh, great. Now, that is not a good thing. Um, all right, we're going to flip this over and we're going to see that it is the white circle a rift and we're going to have to deal with that now. We're going to pause on dealing with that for just a second. We're going to move our monsters. Circles, squares, and diamonds. This is the same monster pattern we had a moment ago. And the only circles or squares or diamonds we have is this one flyer here who will fly to the sky. Lucky for George Barnaby, none of the monsters in the north side moved. So, clue will appear. Since we do not have the Innsmouth board in play, we will be having the clue appear at Hibbs Roadhouse. Let's get that done. All right, there's our clue, 
appearing at Hibbs Roadhouse. Alright, and let's go ahead and resolve the event, and then we'll deal with the rift. Soup Kitchen seeks donations. If any single investigator spends $3, every other investigator with no money gains one stamina. Well, unfortunately, all of our investigators have money, so there's no reason for anyone to spend the money. Although, no, nobody has exactly three, so that's not really going to help us at all. But, also, nothing bad happened. Well, except for the rift opening. We'll be right back and get that rift in action. Okay, we're back to finish the Mythos phase in turn 17. I got everything organized, and now we're going to take this rift... We have had a rift open up, that is not a good thing, with the white circle on it. And since the gate was supposed to open up on the black cave, it will appear. I did have to check the rules to make sure, even with an elder sign, the rift will still appear. Now, um, that rift is going to now move every time the circles move. And if it moves on the white arrow, we're going to be adding doom tokens to the doom track. It's not a good thing. Monsters are going to be flooding the streets or the outskirts, as the case may be. So we're going to have to really uh, get somebody up to Kingsport now. Not sure which investigator is going to be the best one. It may be Trish. Though it might be Vincent Lee. Hmm. No. We'll have to sort of see how that plays out. As we begin the next turn, that is going to wrap it up for turn number 17 in the books. Still hanging in there. We'll see how many more turns we can go before we can get all these seals in place. That ends turn number 17. Welcome back everybody, this is Odysseus, and you are watching the Arkham Horror Campaign Video Series. This is game number one, we're about to begin turn number 18. We're still hanging in there. Things are things are not the best as they could be. Well, we had a rift open up last time, but we have a character who's in sort of a position to start dealing with the rift. We're going to just have to see what happens there. Okay, uh, we're ready to start the upkeep, and we will come over here to Trish. Actually, first thing we're going to move our first player marker. Vincent Lee will be. I'm sorry, George Barnaby will be our first player this turn. We're going to do the upkeep for Trish Scarver. Now she's going to need a speed of three. So I'll move her speed up twice. And we're going to get our sneak up as high as it can go. Because that's what we're going to need to be sneaking around with all these monsters in the streets. She doesn't have anything else that she has to check, so we're going to move on to George Barnaby. Now George is really not going to be worried about too much except getting his sanity back this turn got a bit of money so he's not worried about that doesn't need to move a lot uh, we're going to bump his luck up and we're going to bump his sneak up using his two focus we do have to check for his blessing let's roll one dice and we will see he keeps it for another turn all right now uh, Vincent Lee um, He's a pretty slow old man, so he's going to bump his speed back up to three. Get as much hobbling along the streets as we can. We've got to get back to the newspaper to uh, complete our mission. That's going to give us money and clues, which we desperately need to start closing and sealing some gates. All right, we're, maybe we got a chance here. All right, we do have to roll for his blessing. Let's check that out. Here we go, and he gets to keep his blessing for another turn. Very good. All right, so that will go there. All right, that leaves us Tommy Muldoon, who's currently traveling in the dreamlands. He's going to need his lore as high as he can get it. He, there's no way he can bump his fight up high enough. By the time he gets ready to leave the dreamlands, he can, well, he can have a four. But I'm going to keep his will up. We're going to just try with a three to close this gate. It is a gate to the green dreamlands, which gives us a plus one. We should be able to do that. We're going to refresh our Amigo brain case. And that should do it for him. Oh, yes. we got to collect our pay. We are the deputy after all. Single dollar for him. So much money he's got. And he is going to roll for his blessing as well. 
really nice to keep this blessing for another couple of turns. And we do get to keep it this turn. It's the next turn that's going to be the important one. Alright, so that wraps up our upkeep for turn number 18. Let's see what happens next. Here we are, ready to start the movement phase for turn number 18. We'll start with George Barnaby. He's our first player. He's in the streets and wanting to move into the asylum. Hey, how you doing, Trish? Do we have anything that we need to trade? Um, she really doesn't use her 357 Magnum, but she's going to keep that. I guess we really don't have anything else to trade. Huh? Ah. Trish does have a Flesh Ward spell. She'll go ahead and give that to him. He's more likely to keep casting spells than her. Um, he could give her some money. As a matter of fact, you know that we're going to do that. I'm going to take this fire spot here and break it up. He's going to give her a couple of dollars. Or well, at least one. She didn't give her one dollar. Because she needs to have a couple of dollars to refresh her elephant gun just in case. So he's going to give her one dollar. He's going to keep four for himself. He's going to need two to pay for his healing. And he may go, eh, maybe, he might go down to the hospital and get some stamina, but he'll keep the last two dollars for himself. Alright, well, that's all the trading we need to do there. Uh, here comes some of the fun stuff. Oh no, Vincent, Vincent Lee, he's not to get the fun one this turn. Alright, we're just going to dash along the streets. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three. Alright, he should be safe there unless the flyers land on him, but he's got a pretty good stealth or sneak, so he should be able to be alright that way. Now if the rift moves, we've got a rift position here. If it does move, it will end in the river town and uh, disgorge a monster which won't be on him, and he is two spaces away from any of those monsters, so he won't be attacked this turn, hopefully. I hope unless something very strange happens. Alright, that puts us with Tommy Muldoon, who is going to very simply move to the second space of the Dreamlands. And lastly, we have Trish, who has the most interesting move to do this turn. She has got a speed of three. And we're going to check her sneak. Her sneak is a 6. So, here we go. Trish is going to be moving from the Asylum. 1, 2, into the space with all the monsters. 3, to the train station. So, we've got a lot of sneak checks to make here. Uh, now, she is not blessed. She has a 6 sneak, though. So, we'll check the zeros first. She has the... Formless Spawn and the Deep One both have a zero modifier. We're going to roll those first. We'll do the Formless Spawn first with our six dice. Formless Spawn. Tossing the dice. I see we got a one success. None of the others are successful, but that's all we need is one success. Now we're going to do the Deep One. And we roll three successes. Three sixes, no less. All kinds of success there. Easy to get around the Deep One. Now we're going to toss the dice out, rolling five dice, and that will be for, we'll do the star spawn first. Here we go. He's the hardest one. We do get two successes there, so we're past the star spawn, and then the maniac, also rolling five dice, and having two successes. So, Trish has successfully navigated the streets and snuck past all of those monsters in the streets. Hopefully, next turn, Vincent Lee is planning to do something very similar to that, sneaking into the newspaper if those monsters are still there. Well, hopefully, maybe some of them will move away. All right. Well, that wraps up the movement phase for turn number seven, uh, 18. Okay. Here we are, ready to do the encounter phase of turn number 18. George Barnaby is our first player, and he is in the Asylum. He is not going to have a normal encounter. Instead, he's going to do the special encounter, paying $2 to heal up his sanity. He is the most sane of all the characters in the game, 
with a seven sanity so he's loaded himself up here with sanity there we go he got really unlucky in another world encounter lost six sanity at once all right and that's all over his encounter now Vincent Lee is in the streets he will not have an encounter this turn Tommy Muldoon is in another world he'll do his encounter last that puts us with Trish Scarber who is at the train station next turn she's gonna hop on that train and head over to uh, Kingsport and start dealing with that open rift here we go at the train station all right Bill Washington moves the last of the baggage from his cart onto a truck and offers you a ride as he opens the driver's door. If you accept, move to any location or street area in Arkham. If you move to a location, immediately have an encounter there. What? That is awesome! Alright. We know that the Kingsport board and all the Kingsport locations count as in Arkham. So, we are going to get to start dealing with this rift this turn without having to pay for a train ticket. So we're going to let Bill Washington move us to the Congregational Hospital. Now it's pretty creepy up there. I am loaded with sanity though, so we should be okay. We'll have an encounter there. Um, and that is going to, since we're having an encounter there, I'll we'll go ahead and remove, uh, flip over one of these rift tokens. There are two for the Congregational Hospital, so that's a double shot there. And we're going to have an encounter at the Congregational Hospital. Okay, back for the encounter at the Congregational Hospital. It's a very creepy place. Have not had really any good encounters there, so let's see what Trish finds at the Congregational Hospital. Alright, you explore an ancient crypt in the cemetery and come across a giant mass of white grave worms. Lose to sanity. In addition, any crawling ones in Arkham, including in the sky and the outskirts, move here and encounter you. Well, once again, a horrible place to go for encounters. All right, well, we're going to lose our two sanity. Not good. Do not like that. And I don't think that we have any crawling ones, including in the outskirts. Nope, we don't have any crawling ones on the board. So, we don't have to worry about that. We have uh, dealt with one quarter of the rift, so that's, that's a good deal. We'll have to stay here one more turn to get the other one, and then we'll be moving to the North Point Lighthouse, I think. Uh, actually, uh, we'll go 607 Water Street. Uh, either one. We're going to have uh, be able to deal with that rift fairly quickly. All right. I believe that that's going to wrap up our encounters for... Oh, no, wait. We have uh, Tommy Muldoon in the other world at the Dreamlands. Let's see what he draws. All right, who we have one specific for the Dreamlands? While trudging through the rocky terrain, a stone slips out from underneath your foot. Pass a luck minus one check, or you tumble to the bottom of the hill. If you're in the second area of Dreamlands, move to the first area. If you're in the first area, stay here next turn. Well, he is in the second area, and he has to make a luck check minus one. Luck minus one, well, I have a three luck. I am rolling the blessed dice, so I'm just going to have to hope this works. I don't have really any other way to, to affect this, so we're just going to roll our... We have a luck minus one check. Is that correct? Yes, it was a luck minus one. So I get to roll two dice. Alright, here's our two dice. Okay, here it goes. Excellent job. He has no trouble staying on his feet. He does not slide back and lose a turn. That would have been sort of <laughs> bad timing if that had happened. So, Tommy Muldoon, a little bit lucky. We're on our way next turn, maybe to get another seal. And we're still gathering around. We should have Vincent Lee with enough clues next turn to start the fourth seal. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for the encounter phase for turn number 18. Okay, here we are to do the Mythos phase on turn 18. And as a reminder, if we draw an environment weather card, we lose the game. So, outright loss because of the king in yellow. Here comes our draw for the Mythos phase, turn 18. 
Safety caravan, environment, urban. Whew, not environment, weather. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll, that will replace our current environment. Let's go ahead and resolve the gate. A gate appears at the unnameable where there is already a gate. So, we're going to have a monster surge yet again already sitting on our monster limit. So, we're going to shake up the bag and reach into the corners here and pull out some monsters. One, two, three, and we'll go a little on the different side for four. One, two, three, four. We do have four gates open, so that report will be drawn for the monster surge. The first two will go to the current outskirts. That fills the outskirts. The next two are going to wash this away, raise the terror level to eight. Again, not good. And the last two monsters will sit in the outskirts. Oh, goodness. Man, not good. Monster surge, but no doom tokens on the doom track. That is a good thing. Now, let us see. We have the circle will be moving. All right. And it is not moving on white, it's moving on black. So let's go ahead and move that here. We'll disgorge a monster there, which it cannot. We're going to, well, we'll, that'll go into the outskirts. So we're going to have to draw another rift token, maybe. The black circle uh, is already filled up, so we do not have a new rift marker drawn. That's a good thing. So, we're going to draw one more monster for the outskirts, for that spit out from the rift. Okay, and here comes the draw for that. Oh, another Night Gaunt. Okay, on the outskirts. Alright, we do have the Dimension, the uh, Dreamlands probably closing soon. That will help us a little bit. Well, we have one slash monster right now. That's not a big deal. Okay. Now, uh, monsters moving, we have circles, diamonds, and squares. The same thing we've been drawing for the last few turns. We have X's. All right, well, the only one we have is the square from the outskirts. We have the Servitor of the Outer Gods. Once again, landing on Vincent and Lee out here in the streets. The same location, even. That is not good. We're going to have to do a lot of sneaking next turn. All right. Clue will appear at the Black Cave. That's a nice. We need more clues on the board. Definitely need more clues. So, let's get a clue onto the Black Cave. And let's see what the event says. The Gypsy Caravan. Investigators who end their movement in the south side streets may roll a die. On a success, they gain $2. On failure, they lose $1. This is going to replace our activity marker that we have on the harbor side streets, and we're going to put it on the south side streets. What are those gypsies doing over there by the church? I guess the church is a good place as any for the gypsies to hang out. All right, and that will replace our current environment card, which I hated that one. That was the one that busted up our third seal and that is going to wrap it up for the mythos phase for turn number 18 we're still hanging in there who is getting tougher and tougher every turn that wraps up turn number 18